Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Exodus chapter 16. And they took their journeys from Elam. All the congregation of the children of Israel came unto the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai. So just before the law, there's Sin. On the 15th day of the second month. So 15 days into after the Exodus. A month, excuse me, a month and 15 days. Abed set off the beginning of the month for one month after they departed from the land of Egypt. Forty-five days. And the whole congregation of Israel, the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. They forgot about the victory. We all do. And the children of Israel said unto them, would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. I thought you were crying to God to spare you, help you, get you out of the troubles. When we sat by the flesh pots, uh, the hard rigor, the mortar, being beaten. And when we did eat bread to the full as slaves. Really? I don't think so. For ye have brought us forth into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. No, it's a lie. It's not why you're there. See, never promise anybody before their salvation or after their salvation life is going to be wonderful because it's not. You just change your destination from hell to heaven. You still got a thing called life, and whether you're saved or lost, you're going to have troubles. You're going to have problems. But there are some preachers out there on the airways that, you know, everything's going to be hunky dory. And that's what. Prosperity. Prosperity. That's what Israel thinks to think. Well, you took us out of Egypt, everything's supposed to be wonderful. Go back and look. It's only 16 chapters. Moses and God never said of such. And as Christians, we will suffer. More so if we decide to serve God and do right. But whether we laid back Christians or dedicated Christians, life is going to throw you sour and blackened lemons that you can't make lemonade. So now we're hungry. Well, we were just thirsty. Well, the army was going to kill us. And we need not pressure Israel in the wilderness because we humans, Christians, do the same thing. Whatever is our time that we have troubles, we go to God, you know, why do you do this? It's life. Exodus is to show you this is your life. And we need to God, you see this problem? It's a problem. I don't know how bad it is on your realm, but to me, Lord, it seems a serious problem. Can we hurry up and get to the mountaintop? <laughs> and no blame, no trouble, but they're hungry. And if they're truly hungry, well, they need food. People who are in the flesh that are wanting... 
They are hungry. They haven't got anything to eat. They're dieting. They're, they're thirsty. They can't drink because of a medical test. Or they're giving up on booze. They're giving up on smoking. They're trying to quit drugs. They're going to be angry. They're going to be upset. That's your body. That's your body. Say, hey, I don't like this. Take care of me. Feed me. And as new people of God, they got to realize, you know what? You got to control your flesh, Paul says. You're going to serve by the Spirit or you're going to let your flesh. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven upon you. That's a rain bread. A chance of bread today. That weatherman tried to blow that one on you. We got a little bit of uh, bread and milk coming down here in this area this afternoon with a chance of, you know. God said, I'm going to make it rain bread. Now, I don't know how it rained bread, but God said bread is going to come down. And we'll see by the end of the chapter. From heaven from you, for you. And the people shall go out and gather a certain great every day. John chapter 6 with this. You know, you know what Exodus 16 is? For the 40 years? Physical bread that you pick up, you knead it, you bake it, you boil it, you fry it, you just kebab it. Physical bread. Jesus. John chapter 6. The spiritual bread. This is the bread you eat with your mouth. Jesus is the bread that you receive by faith. John chapter 6 is all about this man. Jesus fed them. They want more. But Jesus says, I am more than that bread. Your fathers are dead. And yet if you eat this bread, Jesus, you'll live eternal life. I have never eaten the body of Jesus Christ, but I have eaten of Jesus, and I'm saved, and I know it. I've never tasted manna. So we'll get more on rain bread from heaven for you. That's never happened before unto Israel. And the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day. Uh-oh. God's now, okay, I'm going to make it. I got a clause attached to this. You're going to gather a rate per person. Let's see how good you're going to do before we get to the law. You're going to do everything I tell you to do? You can't even gather the right amount of manna. A certain rate that I may prove them. Like God tempted Abram with Isaac on the mountain. God said, I want to see what you guys are going to do. With something as small as bread. By the way, you know how many people God fed with this bread? In the wilderness? Let's just take this afternoon right here. As the Bible is we don't know. And do we know how many people fed one afternoon with bread? John chapter 6? We say the 5,000. That was just men. That wasn't counting the women and children. Exodus 16 and John chapter 6, they fit together here. God gave them bread. He's going to give them bread. And Jesus is going to give them bread. God is Jesus and Jesus is God. And the same element is bread. That bread that Jesus gave him was something weird because you cannot take a loaf of bread, seven of them, I think it was, and feed four, four or five thousand people. I will prove them whether they will walk in my law. The law hasn't, there's no law yet. That's Exodus 20. You know what God's doing? He said, listen, because later on in a few chapters, we're going to. Whatever God says, we're going to do. 
Really? Really? Did you for and when we get to that passage, Lord willing, did you forget about the manna? God told you a certain rate, and there were people who went out there and gathered more. There were some people that gathered less. There were some people that kept it overnight. Or not. Or no. And I and it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in. Now we're getting a hint of the Sabbath. Remember I said we haven't there's no Sabbath yet. Israel has not had a Sabbath. We're getting to it now. Yeah. So he's now six days. You're going to do something for six days. On the sixth day, they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. So on the sixth day, it's going to be doubled. Preparing for the seventh day. So we're working to that law. We're working to the Sabbath. The Sabbath is no wise Gentile or church anywhere in the Bible. And Moses and Aaron said unto all the children of Israel, At even, 6 p.m., the church age, church age is at night, At even, then ye shall know that the Lord has brought you out from the land of Egypt. I think that they didn't get it yet. Oh yeah, we believe, hallelujah, the, the, the armies are going to drown, hallelujah. We're thirsty, we're hungry. God is able to wipe out an entire army for them. Oh, I'm so thirsty, God can't help me, he's going to kill me. I'm so hungry, God's going to kill me because I'm hungry. And in the morning, second advent. Look at that. Evening, morning, second advent. In between those two things is a church age. John chapter 6. Then ye shall see the glory of the Lord. At the second advent of Jesus Christ, children of Israel, you're going to see the glory of the Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. And guess who that glory is? Jesus Christ on horseback. Not sitting on the colt of an ass. But sitting on a horse, riding with an army that's behind him. It's not Pharaoh and his army that's coming for you. It's Jesus Christ and his army coming to help you, Israel. How do you like that one? For that he heareth your murmurings, uh-oh, against the Lord. Wait, verse 2 says they murmured against Moses and Aaron. Paul? You got a problem. You're persecuting. Well, who am I persecuting? Christians? No. You're persecuting me. You speak against Moses and Aaron people, you're speaking against me, God. Be careful who you speak about because God may take it personally. Now, don't. Be one of them preachers that will latch on to the speak not against this noited and do his prophets no harms. And, you know, if you speak ill of me, you know, God's going to, no, that's not talking about you. There are people in the pulpits who are wrong and you need to declare they are wrong. Paul did it. Jesus did it. But you got someone who's dedicated to the Lord and doing right as Moses is. You better not speak ill with them. And then don't compare yourself to be Moses. Moses was a special character by God. God spoke to him. God used him. He had a particular ministry. Don't latch on to Moses' ministry. And his characteristics. But when they spoke against Moses, a man of God, they spoke against God. When you do things to Christians, you are doing it to Jesus. You better be aware and you better be careful. 
And Moses uh, said, This shall be what the Lord shall give you in the evening, flesh to eat at night. The bread is going to come in the evening. Morning bread to the full. You're going to get bread It's going to feed you to the fullest. Toast. And we're going to see Roman Catholicism coming in here. I'll give you a warning. So, just by chance, where is it the biggest thing where you supposedly see Jesus on the cow? He's in your toast and he's in your cereal. But that's not worth our vocabulary. And that the Lord heareth your murmurings. How do you like that? Does God hear my prayer? Yes, he does hear your prayer. He also heard your murmurings. Which you murmur against him, I thought was against Moses and Aaron. Be careful who you murmur against. Now, I think there's a murmur, and I think there, there, there's a good complaint in prayer to God. If you take it to prayer of God and say, God, you know what? I really don't think that this situation that we're having right now is really good. Yes, I've done this. Yes, this is happening, but... And then you can call Scripture. Is it a murmur or is it a true fact? And this is the fact that God puts you into it and not yourself. Now, with food and all that for the Israelites, they do have cattle and stuff like that, don't they? Uh, they do maybe have chickens or eggs. I, I don't know. I really don't know. Maybe they don't. But when you're in a country somewhere and you're asking me to give you money for food and you got cows running around, but they're your sacred cows, you can't kill them because they may be your auntie, I ain't going to give you money. Now, maybe they didn't have food because God will supply them food for 40 years. So they may not have enough. Last time we read about food was they came out of Egypt and they had dough that had not been leavened yet. That must have been eaten up by now within 45 days. They're in a wilderness. There's no crops. You can't go tell your your wife, a hullabub, go out in the garden and pick tomatoes. There is no garden, and you're moving on. So here's a nation of people that God is feeding. As he is driving them to the to the promised land, and God's the one that told him, say, you're going to go this way. I'm going to toughen you guys up. And the manna will stop the day they get into the promised land. And when they get into the promised land, Lord willing, when we get to Joshua, it will say, it is high time of the crops to be sown. <laughs> Harvest. So I'm going to assume that there is no food here. God's taking care of it. Paul was was in prison. Most of his, but God took care of him. America is too fat and a hog. Say unto the congregation of the children of Israel, Come near before the Lord. Isn't that interesting? They murmur against Moses and Aaron. They're griping and complaining. God says, come here. Come on. Isaiah 1, 13 or 18. Come now, let us reason together. God is such a mean, rotten God. He wants to kill everybody on the planet Earth. He says, come here, you guys. Come here, you complainers. Come on. Come tell God about it. See the long-suffering God? See the merciful God? Come here. Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your murmurings. <laughs> Moses is speaking to children. Listen, God says, come here, but repent. Get right. And it came to pass as Aaron spake unto the whole congregation of the children of Israel. I don't even know how he did that with not a loud voice. That's just personal thing. And they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. Ooh, ooh that's the second advent passage. 
how they know the glory of the Lord. That thing probably had to light up God is light. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Would you like to know what God's voice is? You know the one, you know, we got it full 66 books of the Bible. We got the King James 1611 Bible. We got there's no signs, there, there's no healings, because we got the complete word of God. But you know what I miss out on? I haven't heard what God said. And yet, unlike Moses, I've got a surety of salvation. Moses didn't. Moses, you smoked that rock? Yeah, I smoked that rock. You better believe I smoked that rock. You ain't going in the land. Now, isn't that cruel of God? But that's the difference between the law and grace. But one day I'm going to hear God's voice. If, if the rapture happens during my time, I'm going to hear, come up hither, my name called. If I die and be present with the Lord, I don't know what the Lord's going to say to me at that point. But I will hear his voice. And the Lord spake to Moses, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. Uh-oh. Speak unto them, saying, don't yell at them, speak to them. At even 6 p.m., you shall eat flesh. So there's really no rebuke against the murmurings that you did it to Moses and Aaron. You didn't come to me, people. And we need to learn when we got life's troubles and problems, stop running to people, stop running to banks, stop running to the pastor, run to God. And maybe God said, yeah, you got troubles. It's been waiting for you to come to me the whole time. Some people are going to hear this message and say, I can't believe he's saying that. You're supposed to rebuke them. He said, come, bring them near. Speak unto them and say, and even shall you eat flesh, in the morning you shall be filled with bread. The whole entire night. And ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. That's a lot better than Pharaoh, isn't it? Pharaoh shall know that I am the Lord. He's burning in hell. The Israelites, you shall know I'm the Lord. Mmm, you got any butter with that? Mmm. That's good. Ooh, my tummy's full. I wonder how God did that. You know, you, you sit up, you know, you, you, you go to a big buffet and you come home, you say, oh, how did he do that? Oh, that was. And it came to pass that at even, 6 p.m., the quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, so there's quails at night. And in the morning, the dew lay, excuse me, lay round about the host. All right, let's get Roman Catholic. That little wafer is called a host. Now, they're not putting you in the, under the Old Testament. Why do you get a host that's taken out of Exodus 16? In Exodus 16, there is no physical Jesus Christ. So you run that host, verse 13, to John chapter 6 and take it literal. You will put that thing in your mouth and proclaim that is the body of Jesus Christ. It's called a host. Over here, the host is literally being eaten. It is nothing spiritual. And when the dew, that's the morning wetness, that lay was gone up, it's gone. Behold, upon the face of the wilderness, the ground, there lay a small round thing. That host is small and round. As small as the, as small as the hoar frost on the ground. So a little tiny thing. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, What is that? We don't know. It is called manna. What is that? Now, that's exactly what manna means. What is that? I don't know. 
for they was not what it was. That's some kind of weird weather phenomenon. Frost, dew, what is that? And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. And Jesus said, That's me. John chapter 6. So you know what a Jew would look at Jesus Christ in the Old Testament as? What is that? I don't know. What is that? But it kept them alive by eating it. So what's the Roman Catholic Church say? If you eat that, it'll keep you alive. Sorry, you're in a whole wrong book and part of the Bible. So what do you do when you get to Joshua, Catholics? When the, the host, the manna disappears and you don't get that no more. We don't go there. See why they don't want you to read your Bible? Jesus said in John chapter 6, what is it? Is me. I am the bread that comes from the Father. Study John chapter 6. And this is the thing which the Lord had commanded. Gather of it every man according to his eating. And Omer. Now this. You go but It's a Jewish weight. I was looking at a Bible the other day and it said it was money. I forget what it was. But this equals so much of a, a pound, a British pound. There was no British pounds back then. And you got to study, the, if you want to get into this, you got to study the measurements of the Jewish people so you can know what these are. Now right here, an omer was enough of manna for a man to eat. I don't know how much that is. My Omer would be a lot different from your Omer. But there's one Omer. He that gathered much, watch this, had nothing over. Well, I got the big games. I'll grab more men than the other guys. We're all done. We're full. And he, he left, no, there's nothing left over. All the men I grabbed? Yes, nothing left over. That's interesting. And he that gathered little had no lack. I'm just going to grab this little bit here. Mmm, I'm full. It's like I gathered just as much as I gathered yesterday. I'm just, wow. They gathered every man according to his eating. Now, does that sound like John chapter 6? They were all fed. They all were full. And there were still bread and fish to be gathered up. And Moses said, let no man leave it until the morning. No leftovers. The manna was given daily. You had to get up bright and early in the morning, 6 a.m. to go out there and get it. And you could not keep it up. You could not gather more. You could not gather less. And except the sixth day, you could not hold it over to the next day and say, Oh, I'm going to sleep in tomorrow. Now, if this is the bread of God, which it is, and this is Jesus Christ, which it is, and the Bible is spoken as the bread, this is your daily Bible reading. Bible reading doesn't get carried over to tomorrow. Oh, I'll read two extra chapters today and won't read tomorrow. Now, I know, listen, things in life, you can't. You know, things get distracted, you can't read your Bible every day. But you should give it a, a chance, a try. How many places is the Bible spoken of being eaten by men of the Bible? Notwithstanding, oh boy, here we go. They hearkened not unto Moses. But some of them left it until the morning. And it bred worms and stank. And Moses was wroth with them. So you see, there's no leftovers except for the sixth day. Disobedience to God. They kept it. We'll put it over here and I'll have some later. 
They don't work. And they gather it every morning, every man according to his eating. And when the sun waxed hot, it melted. That was it. Once it melted, it was gone. And it came to pass that on the sixth day, they gathered twice as much bread as they were supposed to do, two omers for one man. And all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses, Moses, they're grabbing double what they should. This is wrong. And he said unto him, This is that which the Lord has said. I told you that. He didn't listen. Told you on the sixth day, gathered twice as much. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath. Here's the first weekly Sabbath. And guess who it's spoken to? Jewish people. It is spoken to the elders of the Jews. I'll make sure I get this right. 45 days after Israel became official and nation under the blood of the Lamb, they are given a Sabbath. And by the way, what is written right now, Exodus 6, Genesis 1 to Exodus 16, has not been written yet because Moses writes it up on top of the mount. This is all oral right now. The Sabbath doesn't come, to the, the, the weekly Sabbath, here it is right here. Unto the Lord, bake that which you will bake today. So you would bake manna. And seed that ye will see. You seed manna. And that which remains over, lay it up for you to keep, to be kept unto the morning. So however you cook your manna, on the sixth day, take half of it and put it away for tomorrow and they laid it up till the morning as Moses bade and did not stink neither was there any worms therein like God said so if you disobeyed God you got worms and stank you did not disobey God you could have that Sabbath meal from the second day And Moses said, Eat that today, on the seventh day. For today is a set there it is. Today is a Sabbath unto the Lord. Now we now the Jews are God. This is the seventh day. This is our Sabbath. Even before the Ten Commandments shows up. This is the Sabbath. What is that, Moses? Six days you work, seventh day you rest. Jewish people. And he's going to explain it to them. Unto the Lord, today ye shall not find it in the field. Six days, here we go, we're going to explain the Sabbath now. Six days ye shall gather it. But on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, got it? In it there shall be none. So the first mention of the Sabbath to the Jewish people has a reference to manna and collecting it. Again, if the Catholic Church were to follow the Bible, you can take the Mass seven days a week. Now, if you want to be in the Old Testament like, like you're supposed to be as a church, you go six days, the sixth day you take the Mass twice and don't go anywhere on Sunday. But Sabbath is Saturday anyway, so. Some people got it wrong. The Sabbath day for the Jewish people are is our Saturday. It's not Sunday. Sunday going to church is not Sabbath. That's the new day of the week, the book of Acts. And it came to pass that there went out some of the people on the seventh day for to gather, and he found none. Now here, people didn't listen on the other hand. There are people who say, okay, I'm going to keep it up overnight. It got worms, it stank. Oh, didn't listen to God. There are people who went out the, the seventh day and they found none. Not listening to God. And then the Lord said to Moses, How long refuse ye to keep my commandments and my laws? 
This is before Exodus 20. So God establishes the Sabbath as law. Now, are we under law? Then we're not under the Sabbath. Exodus 16. God says commandment and law. There is none yet. Yes, there is. Gathering that manna. That's a law. That's a law. And we will see it again in the big Ten Commandments. And God was flesh in the Sabbath of the Ten Commandments. Six days thou shalt work, and the seventh day thou shalt rest. Here it is. So anybody in the church age professing to be any kind of Christian says, you are to observe the Sabbath day. They are putting you under the law. And that's what Paul rebuked. That's what James and Peter rebuked. At the council for the Gentiles that were getting saved. Well, the Sabbath or circumcision. It's not the law for us Christians. Now, it's proper for the Bible to have, I mean, for the body, excuse me, for a human body to have rest. Your body cannot go 24-7 like America is doing. And China and all those nations. You have got to have a rest. You should at least take one day of rest. And if you want to take a biblical day of God and resting, it is the first day of the week, the book of Acts. So when the Jews are taking a rest, the church is doing something. When the Jews get back to work, the Christians are serving God. Now that did not anger the Jews that Jewish people who were Christians... Who are doing work on the Sabbath but taking Sunday off. You see why they were so angry in the book of Acts? You're eating what? You went in whose house? Why are you walking down the street today? I'm under grace. You get that grace and get it out of here. So, so the people rested on the seventh day. Wait a minute. No, let's get verse twenty nine. See, see, God said, see, for that the Lord has given you the Sabbath. How do you see that? Did you see the double portion you got on the sixth day? Well, yeah. Okay, that's your sign. Jews require a sign. Did you see that? Therefore he giveth you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Did you see that? The bread on two days was a sign to Jews. 1 Corinthians 1.22, I believe it is. Abide ye every man in his place. Don't go anywhere. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. That's the rest. That's a law. That's a sign. That is the day, Israelites, that our God rested from the creation. Of the, and if God rested from the creation, he wants you to rest. So the people rested on the seventh day. And the house of Israel called the name thereof manna. It was like coriander seed. I don't know if I ever had that. White. Of all the colors the host has to be, it's white. And tasted as it was like wafers made with honey. Yeah, kind of, maybe thereabouts, what I remember. It was delicious. I don't know what coriander seed tastes like. I've heard of it. I don't think I've ever had it. And Moses said, this is the thing. This is the thing. Well, I don't even know what to call it. It's a bread, but this is the thing which the Lord commanded. Fill an omer of it to be kept for your generations. Grab an omer of it. That ye may see the bread wherein I have fed you in the wilderness. So here's a testimony. All right? Here's a souvenir. Israel, I want you to take an omer of it. I want you to keep it up so you can show everyone what it looks like. And since Jews are not under signs, they're not under the law today, you cannot go over Israel and see what that manna looks like. It's gone. 
As a matter of fact, when we get reading our Bible, we get a description of what's in the ark, because it's going to be put in the ark later. When they, that ark is open, they say the table, I mean, the, the Ten Commandments and Aaron's rod, it doesn't mention anything about this manna. It's gone. And then next thing you know, the Ark of the Covenant. Actually, first, the mercy seat disappears. That Ark. Because there's a point they're bringing it back and they can look in there. And God strikes them dead. And then it says the, the, the Ten Commandments, Aaron's rod, that but it is in no mention of the manna. And then when Nebuchadnezzar comes in and sacks Jerusalem, the Ark of the Covenant just disappears. And doesn't show up in the book of Revelation up in heaven. No matter who you try to pay to go find it. Whatever movie you're doing. And Hollywood thinks you're going to go find the Ark of the Covenant. That's by works and that's by money. Not by blood of Jesus Christ. Because the only way I'm going to see the Ark of the Covenant. Is by Jesus Christ the finished work upon Calvary. When I go to heaven I'll see it. Now I don't know if Mr. Ford is saved or not. I hope he is. But if he's not he's never going to go see that ark and if he is saved he'll get to heaven one day and say man that is so foolish should have spent this money on missionaries for the word of God instead of the word of crap this is the bread which I have fed you in your see the sign 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 law sign law law sign sign law law sign Jewish you got it Sabbath it's not for Christians and it's amazing that there's a church around where we live. They're the Seventh Day of Baptist Church, and they're going to do a Bible study Wednesday night. Okay, come on, let's do Bible study. Let's. Can I pick the book? Hello, can we do Exodus? Can we do Exodus 16? And I brought you forth from the land of... Don't you forget about that one. I took you out of the land of Egypt. All right, so what has he done? He has taken them from out of Egypt under the blood of the Lamb. He has conquered their enemies through the Red Sea. Now, I still have an enemy, but I got victory over that enemy through Jesus Christ alone. He has given me sweet water. Sweet water that will not affect my diabetes. That was the next thing I had. You know, these waters are bitter, Lord. I didn't realize Christians were going to be so bitter. Here's some sweet water. I am the water of life, Jesus said. Ooh, how's that? Oh, Lord, there's no food here. Hello, Lord, my tummy is growling. Can you take care of me? Oh, I'll take care of you. I'll give you some bread. Really? Okay. Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. You see everything you got by coming out under that lamb, the blood, coming through that doorway of Calvary, through the through the empty uh, tomb where the stone was rolled away. How great! I brought you forth out of the land of Egypt. Remember that. Keep remembering that. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a pot and put an omer full of manna therein, and lay it before the Lord to be kept for your generation. And let's see, Hebrews 9.4. Let's go check that out real quick. Hebrews 9.4. See what that says. Every word of God is great. Hebrews 9.4. Hebrews 8. Hebrews 9.4. Oh, here it is. And this is verse 3. And after the second veil, this is the most holy place, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer, the Ark of the Covenant, overlaid round about with gold. There's the Ark. Wherein was the golden pot. Did it say golden pot over here? No, it didn't say Moses, Aaron, go get a golden pot. It says go get a pot. That could be anything. So you see scripture with scripture, so you show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed. You can say, yeah, over here it says, a golden pot that had manna, and Aaron's rod that budded, 
and the tables of the covenant. Like I said, when you go in the Old Testament, that manna is going to be missing. The rod's still there. The Ten Commandments are still there. But the, the manna is gone. So we learn with Scripture of Scripture, that's a golden pot. Now, can I raise another question here? We realize Uzzah, he touched the ark because the ox shook and poof, Uzzah's dead. Upset David completely. Grab um, a, a homer, uh, excuse me, an omer of manna and put it in a golden pot that they may see. Okay. You ready for this one? This one, you definitely need to go to the book of Revelation. But if I made a golden pot, could you see the manna? No. But isn't the gold that's in the streets of New Jerusalem transparent gold? That that pot right there was transparent gold. You could show up and say, there's the manna. How's that? You couldn't get that with scripture with scripture. And if you had a modern Bible, it probably messed it up somewhere. I guarantee I would assume by the Bible that that pot was clear. Here's the golden pot and you can see through it. Well, that's a weird gold. No, it's not. I'm going to walk on that one day. And put an omer full of manna there and, and lay it up before the Lord to be kept for your generation. You know, you know how great God is? According to Hebrews and according to the book of Revelation, that is still laid up by God. You know, I like, I like one part of the book of uh, Pilgrim's Progress. They go into this one house, and he's got laid up the jawbone he has. He's got laid up the five stones that David had. He's got everything laid up of all the saints. Now, I don't know if it's going to be like that in heaven, but I wonder. What God's going to have, uh, I don't want to use a kind of museum kind of thing. You know? Unlike the Baptist, unlike the Catholics, you know, here's the head of John the Baptist when five years old. Here's the John, head of John the Baptist when he got beheaded. You know, like, you know, they call it. Oh, what they forgot what do you call it now? Relics. Every altar the ba of the Catholic Church has some kind of relic. One has Mary's breast milk, and another one has the feathers of Michael the Ark. You know what? I've got the tools of God. And one of the tools of God we just read in Hebrews 9.4 is that Aaron's rod that did all kinds of these miracles. And yet, I got something better than that manna. I got something better than that pot. I got something better than Aaron's rod. I got something better than the law that God wrote. I've got Jesus Christ, the bread of life, the water of life, the rock that doesn't sink at the bottom of the sea. I got the blood of the Lamb of God which took away my sin. I'd better remember that. And yet today it's dying out in churches. And the Lord commanded Moses. So Aaron laid up before the testimony. That's before the ark was built. There's something called a testimony that they're carrying around until they build that ark. To be kept. And what's a testimony? Something you have about God, what he's done for you. And the children of Israel did eat manna 40 years. 14,400 days under the Jewish calendar. 14,400 days they ate that. I didn't figure out how many the Sabbath day. But total, 14,400 days they ate that manna. Until they came to a land inhabited, the, the Joshua, let's, tell, let's go to Joshua chapter 5, verse 12, I believe that is. Joshua 5, 12. I hope I got this right. Yep, Joshua 5, 12. In Joshua 5, 12, it says, The manna ceased on the morrow. After they had eaten of the old corn of the land, neither had the children of Israel manna any more, but they did eat of the fruit of the land of Cana that year. And I say roughly four, 1,400 or 1,500 years later, they had the manna. Jesus Christ. 
What? Fourteen hundred. Four, yeah, fourteen thousand four hundred days. They ate, they ate for forty years, and then Jesus Christ shows up and says, "I'm the bread of life." And an interesting note that you can mark for yourself and take with the Bible. Now, an Omer is tenth part of a ephah. You say, "Well, that really helps." Well, when you Look at all the all the places where these measurements are. They may help you. Uh, and the tenth part is a tithe. Is that interesting? And Omer is a tithe. I mean, yeah, tenth part of an ephah a tithe. 